Hi, my name is Julia Young. I'm here to talk to you today about bringing a character called Penfold to life uh, on broadcast using Adobe Character Animator. So just to give you a brief introduction before I start speaking and breaking it down, we're just going to play a quick sizzle reel and then we'll be back to me. I know Penfold from my childhood. I watched the original series growing up, so when I heard there was a new series, obviously I was incredibly excited. And then the idea of having Penfold Live was a really exciting thing to do. So we started talking to the BBC about Penfold's character, how he'd interact with the presenters, working out what he would actually be doing and trying to capture the performance and the spontaneity of performance within uh, Character Animator. Penfold is a deceptively complicated character. He's really sweet and really cute, but there's a lot of different layering that goes into making him that way. We were constantly pushing and pushing to try and make the rig and the character as Penfold as possible in a new piece of software. It was a big challenge. Is that some kind of joke? Penfold is an amster from the Danger Mouse cartoon show and he popped in to visit us one day and he presented live TV with me and my friend Katie Fisselton on CBBC. And Penfold sat in all afternoon and joined in and had a right old laugh. Hacker is a very, very cheeky puppet, as you know if you've seen CBBC. And he kept trying to get into Penfold's space. He was really trying to get Penfold off his stride. He was chatting away and I kept leaning into him like that going, Penfold, how are you doing, Penfold? And he leaned back going, get out of my space, Hacker. And as the animator behind that, it was actually quite physically difficult because you have to lean as far as you can while keeping the puppet upright, while keeping your head in a certain direction so Penfold's looking the right way, while looking at a screen over here to see how it looks. So physically it was quite demanding, but it was funny. The feedback was really good and it's really nice to get the best out of the software. Um, and, and make something where people will have those wow moments. That's always a really nice thing. At the end of the project, at the end of filming, we were all absolutely elated. We were so pleased with how it had gone. Penfold was himself and we were being true to the character. And that was so important to me and I'm really glad we did it. So that's a very brief introduction to the project. If you've never seen Penfold before, just as a quick introduction, he comes from a children's cartoon called Danger Mouse, which is a beloved British children's cartoon. Danger Mouse, he's like a rodent version of James Bond, and he goes and defeats bad guys, and Penfold is his beloved hamster sidekick who's sort of chubby and scared of everything. He's wonderful. So the idea of the project was like many heritage children's brands these days, uh, Danger Mouse was originally made in the 80s, I grew up with it, and it's now been revamped for a new generation. So digital animation, all very zippy, vector, beautiful. So as part of the promotion for it, when it came onto TV at the end of last year, Penfold was asked to come on CBBC live and be interviewed by the presenters and kind of chat to the audience. Kids would send in photos and get to ask Penfold questions. And this is how the project started and came to be. So this is Character Animator that you're seeing on screen. As you can see, Penfold is moving as I move. If you look in the top right of the screen, you'll see my face as it is in the webcam. And I've got tracking dots all over me. So as I raise my eyebrows up and down, so he does the same. Similarly, if I turn my head, so will he. Um, and as I'm speaking into my microphone, he is lip syncing automatically with the microphone. Something else that you might be able to notice if you've got eagle eyes is as he moves left and right, you see his little hairs on the top of his head and his little lapels on his jacket. They're flowing with him as well. So Character Animator has this wonderful, wonderful way of automatically adding secondary animation, which if you're animating traditionally, you've really got to think about and you know, force it to look natural. But because of the physics of Character Animator, it's all done beautifully and intuitively. So I'm going to start by showing you how he's rigged. So I'm going to talk a lot about rigging. When I say rigging, I literally just mean to make a character, you need to break him into all of his different pieces. This is his body, these are his arms, these are his legs, this is his head. And if you label your layers correctly in whichever software you choose to do this in, you can do this in Illustrator or Photoshop. If you label your uh, constituent parts correctly, Character Animator takes those labels and automatically says, OK, that is his arm, that is his leg. So again, really very intuitive to use and not scary at all if you've never rigged or animated anything before. So if I go into some of these layers, for example, in the same way that automatic tagging works for the head turns, and if I go into the head, you'll see his mouth shapes as well. So those mouth shapes, which it's picking up from my microphone, there are 14 of them. 
um, and those happen when it hears something, but then there are also three shapes that can happen when it hears nothing at all. So at the bottom, you've got neutral, smile, and surprised. So they're just like little extra things for in those quiet moments, he's still got a nice bit of personality. Personality, excuse me. Just going to show you a couple of JPEGs of what it actually looked like on screen. When you saw it in Character Animator, you'll have noticed there's an alpha background. See this squared thing? That's an alpha channel. So when that outputs using an NDI, which you can talk to the guys uh, in the demo booths about, I won't go into the detail, uh, that goes out using an NDI stream into the mixing deck where Pengfold can be layered over the broadcast image. So because he's sort of short and cute, we had him on a really high stool so his legs could dangle and it was just nice. Penfold's scared of everything. As you can see, this was a Halloween episode, so there was a lot of, oh, that's terrifying, because we really wanted Penfold to be himself in this. Hacker getting into his space. So lip sync in particular is something that I really enjoyed doing on this project. The first time I got into character animators was in 2016 using the animated Mr. Bean. And back then, it was a little bit more simplistic. You only had those 14. But now, there is a beautiful thing called cycle layers, which you can add into those. So some of these vowels, for example, the oo sounds, the o sounds, you see there are multiple shapes in there. So cycle layers is a way of putting in automatic animation within the puppet itself. So rather than just having one shape for oo, that sort of extreme, where are we? Let me go into his three-quarter, and then you can actually see. Mouth. OK, if I go into the woo here, you see the extreme is quite far forward on his muzzle. He's got quite a big muzzle. So by putting in that animation, taking him from the back of his mouth to the front of his mouth, it just added so much more kind of 3D effect, really made him feel like a much more believable character. The other thing that Cycle Layers uh, did in this project was move his arms. So as you can see, as he's moving in the webcam, I'm moving his body and his face with my face. But to move his arms, we set up triggers. So if I click my keyboard shortcuts, I can have him spock fingers, waving. These are all using Cycle Layers. So within that Illustrator project, in his arms, I have all of these different uh, actions. So if I go into shrug, for example, again, I've got eight shapes there, and those are the keyframes taking him from arm down to shrug. And the, the, the cycle literally just means it cycles up and it cycles down. Let me show you in rig mode how this looks. So I've been showing you the Illustrator rig. Thanks to Adobe Dynamic Link, every single time I save that Illustrator rig, every time an update happens, it automatically comes into Character Animator. I'm about to show you my favorite panel when it comes up, my uh, triggers panel. In just a second. Here it is. All right, this panel down here is my favorite panel in the whole entire world. It's these little icons here. These are called swap sets. So because you saw all of the different arm actions he can do, we have to do kind of an if function. If you think of a spreadsheet, you go, OK, if you see this, then you do this. In the same way, his arms here. If I do absolutely nothing with the keyboard, he stays in his default sitting position. But if I click any of these keyboard shortcuts, as you can see, he'll do his other arms. So it's a really, really nice way of keeping things streamlined and really easy to use. The beautiful thing about this as well is you can choose to have sticky triggers. So for example, he has costume changes in here. So I can choose, rather than having to click and hold a trigger to keep his costume on, I can click, costume appears, I can forget about it, not worry about it. And that's really important for usability when you're live animating. So in terms of usability, just to go back to the concept of the project again, we had an added complication. So normally in Character Animator, when you're doing a live project, you really kind of want to be doing the whole thing yourself. So you, you know, your brain knows what your body's doing, what the keyboard shortcuts are doing, and what you're saying. So it can all happen nicely and smoothly. We because nothing's easy, decided to have three people do this. So on the right-hand side is Kevin Eldon. He is the voice of Penfold. In the middle is a B CBBC presenter uh, from a program called Blue Peter, if you've ever heard of it, who was doing the keyboard shortcuts for Penfold. And there's me smiling in the corner, trying not to panic as I move in the webcam. 
So it was really, really important for this project that those keyboard shortcuts were really simple, easy to use, did as much as possible in one stroke of a key as possible so that when we were doing it live, Ke Kevin was ad-libbing. Lindsay, who'd never seen this project before, never animated before, would just be able to click a button and it was fine. So that was really important. And swap sets, the beauty is it lets you do this. So in previous iterations of Character Animator, when I was doing this back in 2016, one keyboard shortcut could only trigger one set of things. And if something was being triggered by one keyboard shortcut, it couldn't be triggered by another one. Whereas with this, because of how it's grouped, you can actually trigger multiple things using a single shortcut, and one thing can be triggered using multiple shortcuts, if that makes sense. So for example, let me show you this was the shortcut sheet. So in order to keep things nice and simple, rather than having, say, the eyes and the eyebrows as separate keyboard shortcuts, I can make whole expressions using them. And similarly with his arms, if you look at the wave, hello, make your point, shock, and I think point upwards as well, they all have the same left arm, and it just kind of, it adds a little bit of extra motion. But previously, I would have to have duplicated that again and again and again. But thanks to these swap sets, I could just make it all happen using one, key, uh, one set of shapes using multiple keyboard shortcuts. Let me show you one other thing as well. Thanks to swap sets, this is my little nerdy happy thing, which I'm sure most people won't notice at all. So set rest pose is how I tell Penfold that's where he's supposed to be if he ever goes a bit funny. So this is his neutral expression, and as he's lip syncing with me, he's got his normal happy smiley face on. But when he's scared, we don't want him to be happy and smiley. You'll notice his mouth shapes have gone to sad ones. So thanks to these swap sets, you get these really lovely little bits of nuance. You know, you can have a really simple character, but if you want to, you can add so much more to him as well. So that's a really, really lovely thing to be able to do. The one other thing I did add, which I'm going to, this is going to introduce us to record mode up here. So you'll see up at the top, I've got rig, record, and stream. Most of the time I'm using stream for live broadcasts, but using record, you can do a lot more than that. So for his little legs, as part of the joke with him being very, very short and a very, very tall thing, we wanted him to be able to swing his legs and just kind of, you know, enjoy that. But because we didn't want to worry about that while dealing with an interview, we wanted to be able to just have them do their thing automatically. So his little leg shapes, he's got a set of cycle layers to make them swing alternately, cycle layers to make them swing together, or I've recorded them, so I've just pressed B, and now he's got 10 minutes where they're just going to kind of do their own thing, and I don't have to worry about it. And this is using record mode. So this is the timeline down here. Let me just break down all the different uh, things that you see on the right-hand side. So there are lots of different uh, rig elements that you can put into the puppet when you're building it. A dragger tool is one of the ways to make arms move without cycle layers. So we chose cycle layers for this project because it's an interview situation. We know he's going to be asked questions, he's going to react to them. It's nice and sort of simple to just, he's, he has a certain number of reactions and that's fine. But one thing that we did do on the Animated Mr. Bean project, we played charades. Uh, this was live on Facebook. So in order for him to be able to live react to anything that the audience said whatsoever, we rigged his arms with draggers. So if I go back to rig mode again, we're about to see uh, a set of tools pop up at the bottom, which I'll just briefly explain. So down here, when you bring your rig in for the first time to Character Animator, you have all those different constituent parts listed, as you saw in Illustrator here. It's exactly the same as what I had before. So you've got all your head turns, mouth shapes, etc. in there. So the first button here, this is where you can put uh, the handle tool. So this is where you sort of tell it where a uh, an, um, pivot point is. So an arm, obviously, you tell it it pivots at the shoulder head, pivots at the neck, etc. This one, beautiful, this is the stick tool. So if you have an arm, rather than sort of making cycle layers, you can have an arm and then tell it, stick here, this is one bone, stick here, this is another bone. And then using the dragger tool, you can stick a little dragger here so that using a mouse rather than keyboard shortcuts, you can actually drag his arm around. So we could have him wave at the audience, you know, pull funny poses, all that sort of thing. And it's a really, really nice effect. 
But as I say, for usability on Penfold, we decided to stick to cycle layers. If I head back to record mode. So this is where stuff gets really exciting. Not only can you have replays, so we used it just for his legs. But if, for example, you knew the answer to a question, what that was going to be, if you wanted to have something automate, you could record it and then set it to a trigger. Done. Nice and easy. So record mode is exciting because it makes uh, the animation a lot more sophisticated. You can record takes, as in live action. So here at the moment, all of these are set the same tools that I've just shown you in rig mode. You've got your dragger, eye gaze. You can set it to follow your eye gaze if you want. Face, so his head turns. Lip sync. Physics is sort of those uh, hair moving and things. That's his physics. So you can set how heavy gravity is. You can set if there's wind blowing. I've not got that set at the moment, so that's why that's grayed out. His triggers, that's keyboard triggers that I put in. So for the moment, I'm going to leave all of these on record, but you can record them individually. So if I want to record something very briefly, click on the red button. And you're just going to go, oh no. And I'm going to stop. So that will have just recorded. You see it's recorded the audio, it's recorded eye gaze, face, lip sync, and the triggers that I pressed at the same time. But say I wasn't happy with when I moved, or when I said, oh no, or, for, or if I'm not happy with the lip sync, I just pull the uh, scrubber here back to the start of the timeline, and I record it again. So say I want to use worried eyes instead of scared eyes. I'm going to click on this. And he's going to do worried eyes and go, oh no. So now you can see I've got two takes. And it's automatically chosen the take, uh, the second take that I've done. But what I can do now is I can blend between these two takes. So for example, rather than having this worried eye start where it does, say I want him to look worried sooner, I can drag this sooner. Maybe it finishes sooner as well. And maybe I don't want his pupils to go small like they did in the scared ones. So I'm just going to get rid of this. And in this way, so like a live action production, you can sort of pick your favorite take, but it's sort of more sophisticated than that in that you can mix and match all the, the different elements. And just to give you an idea of the speed that this is going at compared to regular animation, in regular TV animation, an animator can be asked to sort of animate between 20 seconds and a minute per week. So if you think of this more as a live action shoot, that's 20 seconds animated in 20 seconds, and then maybe finessed over 10 minutes or something. So the, the speed difference is absolutely enormous. So let me go back. I've just missed off something about my favorite panel, which I would like to share with you. So live, live production, as with anything, there's always stuff that goes wrong. People change their minds. We had a lot of mind changing from the BBC on this, and actually from Lindsay, who ended up doing the keyboard shortcuts on the day. So this is how I like my keyboard shortcuts laid out. I have all my expressions on one layer. I have all of my arm motions on another. I can sort of play it like a piano, nice and easy. But the day before the broadcast, Lindsay said, no, I want expressions for my right hand and arms for my left hand. And she wanted the whole keyboard layout completely changed. Day before a, a broadcast, you know, no stress. It's absolutely fine. Fine. So back to my favorite panel. When it comes up. Here it is. So the beauty of the layout of this is that you can change stuff really easily. In previous iterations, you used to have to scroll through the hierarchy and individually say, OK, this eyebrow with this trigger and this with that. Once you've dragged them all into your swap sets, all of your triggers are in one place. And it also makes uh, things like troubleshooting really easy. So for example, if my eyes are doing one thing and the eyebrows are doing the wrong thing to go with that, I can really, really easily see, OK, that's where I've gone wrong, and change it and fix it. might just explain some final uh, things, the choices that we made in this project as well. So 
I mentioned earlier that you can have it follow your eye gaze around. Because of our weird layout, we had all of us sitting in the BBC studio like this. I couldn't have it following my pupils because I kept looking over at Kevin to see what he was about to do. I kept ke keeping an eye on where Lindsay's hands were to make sure she was okay. So if Penfold had been following what I was doing, it would have looked really, really weird to the kids at home. So we had it instead. They're plugged into keyboard shortcuts so he could look at the screen for when he was talking to people. He could look at the presenters up, down. And then we also had funny eyes as well. So this was kind of the final element of the broadcast that we got to do was kids had sent in photos and videos saying, Penfold, what do you think of this? Penfold, what do you like about that? And one of the things was the kids uh, sending in their special skills. So one of the kids sent in, I can do this with my eyes, can you? So he went, of course I can. One of the kids said, Penfold, can you do this with your tongue? Of course I can. That's a bespoke uh, cycle layer like that to do that. And finally as well, it was Halloween, so a costume change as well. So if I click X, he's got a little pumpkin on his head. And I really love this about Character Animator because of the layering and because of those swap sets. It means that I can do really bonkers things with overlays. So with his uh, face interacting with that uh, pumpkin, it sort of looks completely natural, but actually it's sort of quite compl complex. And with these arm overlays, when his hands go in front of each other, those are overlays. His lapel sometimes got in the way, so that would have to be on a whole separate thing. But thanks to swap sets, it really wasn't an issue. And that's Penfold. Does anyone have any questions? Would like to know anything more about the project? No? Well, I think that's everything I've got to say, unless anyone has anything else. Oh, rigging, it depends on the complexity of the puppet. Um, so Penfold took, I'm going to say by the time we finally settled, it had taken maybe four weeks. But that was just because BBC kept changing their minds. We had a lot of different uh, concepts. So at one point, it wasn't going to be Halloween. It was going to be sort of more of a Valentine's thing. And he was going to have a crush on the presenter. And he was blushing, and his face went red, and all of this. So we did go down one completely different route and then had to bring it right back again. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your attention. And if anyone wants to talk to me, I'll be hanging around here. Thank you very much.